Friends and greetings from Iceland. Yesterday I visited uh, Blue Lagoon and used uh, a chance to fly a drone to the fish line at Sunnukura. And we will take a better look at all the fishes and all the lava which spilled over during the past eight eruptions north of Grindavik. At the same time, we will go over the latest update uh, from Icelandic Met Office uh, on the current situation in this area. The update was published a long time ago on April 22nd. After that, they didn't have any updates up to now, but nevertheless, we will uh, go over it. The land uplift is still being measured in Svartsengi, although, although its rate has slowed considerably. Therefore, the situation remains that magma intrusion and a possible volcanic eruption must be expected. The land uplift was very rapid after the major, major event on April 1st, when a short-lived volcanic eruption occurred in Grindavik and a 20-kilometer-long magma tunnel was formed. The speed of the land uplift was much greater than after the last events at Sunukur Crater Row. However, the speed is now similar to that between previous events, and it is therefore clear that magma accumulation continues under Swartzengi. Magma has now flowed into the crust there continuously for 17 months, or since October 2023. There is still considerable seismic activity at the magma tunnel. An average of 100 earthquakes per day were measured over the past week, it's prior to April 22nd, according to the Icelandic Met Office, and they were rather small, below magnitude 1. Now we are to the east of Hagafatl mountain, uh, and flying above the Sunnukar Gingar fissure line, and here, uh, slightly to the east of Hagafatl, you see this enormous crack. This fissure or crack is not a new thing, it has been there for a long time during the previous eruptions, it was also visible. Maybe it got somewhat wider or more steam coming or gas coming out of that, hard to say. I, nobody measured the size of it, but uh, I never flew above it and now finally I made it with a drone and you can see it uh, from above. Later we'll go further to the north and fly from the other side of this quick. It's quite incredible. Things that lava didn't flood this area because it's on the hill. So it means this crack extends further under the lava but is not visible in the other parts, only here on the on the top of the hill. But this fissure extends for uh, perhaps a few kilometers of this size. As you know, the last eruption lasted only six hours. It was on April 1st. I was on the island of Madeira and by the time I came to Iceland the next day, the eruption was over. The same day, we had an interesting article which appeared in an Icelandic newspaper called Vizir, where we saw a commentary from Magnus Tumi Gudmundsson, professor of geophysics, who said that the uh, April 1st event was comparable to the magma intrusion in November 2023, when the large magma tunnel was formed. He said that the tunnel is pushing its way northeast and that April 1st eruption was just a small leak from the underground tunnel. Magnus said that it is likely that we have reached the second part of the volcanic eruption series at Sundnukur. It is true that intrusion has been decreasing every month in 2024, and if this trend continues, it is very likely that it will eventually slow down all this. There could be one more thing, he adds, if it develops like this. Then the infusion could change again. It is more likely that we are very much in the latter part, said Magnus Tumi. He also said that uh, April 1st volcanic eruption and magma movements are the same type of event that occurred in November 2023, but on a much smaller scale. In November 2023, a large magma chamber was formed, but no eruption occurred until a month later. Magnus says that more material entered this chamber in November 2023, then came to the surface in the two largest eruptions combined. 
The difference between this and the eruptions that have occurred in that most of the magma is pushing its way underground and not coming to the surface and the eruption we had on April 1st was just a small leak. The biggest of craters that you see, and uh, actually it's a twin crater, but there is a smaller one further north, is from the summer 2024 when the eruption lasted the longest. Uh, it was in July 2024 when it lasted for uh, three weeks and Blue Lagoon uh, had been operating during the last period of this eruption and you could see it the shooting lava up from this crater all the way from Blue Lagoon across the hill. Blue Lagoon is to the left side there, we see it now in the background. Now we will turn around and we will fly over this crack from the other side. There is the town of uh, Grindavik next to the ocean. The evacuated town, some 20 people maybe still live there, but most sold their houses to the special fund created by the state. So here we are approaching the fissure, which is clearly visible on the top of the hill here. And as I told, it extends under the lava all the way further north. But here it's burned, it's naked, you can see it, how it looks. You see all those gases which are coming out from the fish, you poisonous gases, deadly gases. An exposure to this gas for half an hour, only 30 minutes, ends in the death of a human. So deadly it is. So it's extremely dangerous to approach uh, the volcanoes where you have huge gas emissions as we had here on the first days of the eruptions as most of the magma and gas emissions come in the course of first 24 hours. You see, uh, this crack comes from later stages of the eruptions because lava flowed over and then it cracked. So it was not there during the first eruptions. Sunukar Giger Crater Row belongs to the volcanic system of Eldvorp Svartsengi, translated as fire cones, black meadow in Icelandic. And we should be reminded that during the Holocene, it means since the end of Ice Age, which ended at 9,000 years ago in Iceland, the Svartsengi system experienced it altogether between 12 and 15 eruptive periods, a periodicity of approximately 1,000 years as evidenced by the lava flows associated with it. Those recurring activities are represented by a close succession of eruptions over a period of several decades. The last of these eruptions took place in the 13th century with the Reykjanes fires a series of effusive eruptions on Svartsengi and Reykjanes which took place between 1210 and 1240 and which produced the lava flows with an area of 50 square kilometers that is 19 square miles for Svartsengi alone so the, we're still a long way to go to reach that number I mean during the current ongoing series and now we are approaching the defensive barriers or dikes which had been constructed around the town of Grindavik. They are even higher around Blue Lagoon, smaller around Grindavik. Nelson is a pioneer in constructing uh, those uh, dikes or barriers to divert the lava flows, as you know. And it worked out well so far. So far, nobody knows what will happen next. Here the fish open it up right in the middle of the dike as you see in April 1st, luckily it lasted very brief, only 6 hours and didn't cause any harm to the town as most of people thought initially. It should also be remembered that not all the lava types can be diverted this way 
It works well with the basaltic lava which erupts on the oceanic islands like Iceland, Hawaii, Canary Islands, but not with andesite lava which, or rhyolic lava which are far thicker in consistency and would push the wall. Uh, so basaltic lava is hot enough and fluid enough to be diverted, hence the basaltic lava flows can extend and cover vast territories the longest that we know is from the eruption of uh, Bartha Bunga volcanic system a great flow of Thursov and lava flowed for 100 kilometers basaltic lava reached the oceans in Stokes area nearly all of Iceland is made of basalt 80 percent of Iceland is basaltic lava oceanic lava so the 20% of Iceland is made of rhyolit lava, which is the coldest of lavas. It's about 800 degrees hot when it erupts. And the interior mountains of Ketlingafjot and Landmannalaugar are made of rhyolit lava, which does not erupt often. To see rhyolit mountains, you would need to go to Landmannalaugar in Iceland. The roads to Landmannalaugar in the interiors of Iceland are open only during the summer periods. Uh, some companies do tour, tours to Landmannalaugar in those mountains are kind of different because they are light in colors. As uh, rallied lava is lighted by itself, the basalt is black as you see. 80% of planet Venus is also basalt, so without air of course. Now uh, let's return back to the subject of Reykjanes fires, which the eruptions which took place west from this area, not far, like 10 kilometers further west at the fissure line called Eldverp. Every type of history tends to replicate itself. There is nothing new on this planet. So the things we have we saw in the 13th century might happen also in the 21st. The Reykjanes fires in the 13th century, called the Reykjanes Eldar in Icelandic, uh, were the series of volcanic eruptions that took place on Reykjanes Peninsula, close to the area of Blue Lagoon, in the southwest Iceland, between approximately 1210 and 1240. They caused widespread physical and economic damage, covering large areas of the peninsula in lava and tephra, and causing the mass starvation of livestock on Reykjanes and the neighborhoods as well as a number of deaths of people due to earthquakes. The peninsula's volcanic systems were subsequently dormant for 800 years until a fresh series of eruptions began in 2021 as we know, which have been called by some the new Reykjanes fires. And during the 13th century, when we had the last uh, eruptive series in this area, uh, the activity had been concentrated along the fissure line called Altverb, which is the, to the west of Blue Lagoon. Uh, Altverb is the name of scoria and spare cones in offset sections west of Blue Lagoon and west of Grindavik, that form a row of 10 kilometers and it's surrounding lava covering 20 square kilometers. It dates back from a volcano tectonic episode between 1210 and 1240 called the Reykjanes fires. At the center of Altwerp, there are geothermal features and a single borehole. Perhaps we will have also a geothermal area in the middle of Sunukur. Giger crater row, as you see, there is lots of steam and activity there. I mean, there are lots of degassing and uh, smokes coming in from the middle of the fissure. Women from Grindavik uh, used to bake bread in the steam, I mean, at Altwerp area, from the lava, and a trail, hence, had been called Broyz Stigur, the bread trail that leads there from the town of Grindavik. Remains of human activity can be found in various places in Eldwerp. The other uh, neighboring volcanic system, which is to the east of Svartsangi, 
is called Krisovic Trotla Dinge Volcanic System. And there we had a volcanic eruption in the 12th century and it lasted for 37 years. And the lava flow reached uh, the sea on the north and the south coast of Reykjanes Peninsula. This volcanic system uh, uh, stretches for 50 kilometers and is uh, composed of fissures formed without a developed uh, central volcano. Maximum elevation is 400 uh, meters above the sea level. The system has uh, no ice, but a large lake, Lake of Clever, what uh, lies within the system. Uh, the characteristic activity is effusive basaltic eruptions producing the lava flows covering some tens dozens of square kilometers and minor tephra deposits eruption frequency during the last three thousand years within Krasovic system was one eruption per 750 years and that one eruption lasted as you know 37 years during the last uh, period now you saw all the fissures which run through the town. It's really bad news for the residents of Grindavik if this volcano will keep erupting more. The next eruption is likely to happen in July if you take three months from the April 1st or even earlier if the land rise will be faster than before and keep, keeps its pace as it is now. Those are the major news and updates from Iceland. I wish you all the best. Hope you enjoyed this footage. Be well and God bless you.